Watching the American media's coverage of the G7 in Biarritz, France, I can't help but think they can't go any lower or be more uninformed or more dishonest. What, if anything, do you think the president accomplished at this G7 summit? Well, it's not clear anything, really. Isolated and alone on the world stage, the president wasn't leading at this G7 summit, but he was misleading. It was more, less of a G7 and more of a kind of G6 plus one. Ooh, brilliant analysis. The indisputable fact is that America under President Trump has an economy that is the envy of the world, dead kill for the numbers we have. Yet, as if on cue, the press finds a way to frame things in the worst possible light against Trump. But here's what you need to know. Number one, China is coming back to the trade negotiating table. That's all because of Trump's tariffs. Number two, the White House and Japan are negotiating a new trade deal on agriculture and beef. It's going to be great for American farmers. Number three. The U.K. wants a trade deal. Well, they're going to have to wait after the Brexit deal is settled to get it. Number four, the EU is facing huge political and economic problems. And number five, we have the strongest economy, bar none, in the G7. Yet Peter Baker, a pundit masquerading as a journalist at The New York Times, he was so desperate to hit Trump that he measured the meeting's success on the number of words in the final statement that came out from the G7. Quote, with all the differences with Trump, the G7 leaders ended up releasing a largely general one-page statement that added up to 264 words. The last joint statement under Obama in 2016 was 14,263 words. International bureaucrats, they, they talk a lot and write a lot. Meaningless blather. And that was back in 2016, of course, when the U.S. economy was kind of limping along and China was eating our lunch. Do you, have to, you want that or do you want a short G7 statement as we enjoy unparalleled economic success, especially compared to the French, the Germans, and the British? My friends, this is an easy call. The fact that major European countries are in economic turmoil, it's not our fault, it's theirs. They staked their futures on a European Union that was flawed from the inception. They are overregulating their businesses and overtaxing their people. And they allowed in more than a million refugees of very different backgrounds and different values. And yet the media, they somehow think Trump should follow their lead? I don't think so. Trump had the guts to do a serious review and revision of previous administrations, I'm talking both parties, their disastrous trade policy with China. China has taken a very hard hit over the last number of months. You know, they've lost uh, three million jobs. It'll soon be much more than three million jobs. Their chain is breaking, the chain is breaking up like nobody's seen before. And once that happens, it's very hard to put it back together, you understand. I think they very much want to make a deal. And the longer they wait, the harder it is to put it back, uh, if it can be put back at all. Uh, the president is being very crafty here. The media is not going to give him any credit and very pragmatic. Now, he's still willing to work a deal with the Chinese, yet he's not going to agree to anything if it returns the United States to the status quo before he came into office, where China just cheated rampantly and they got stronger and stronger at our expense year after year after year. He's not going to agree to that. Yet in the framing again of every story, CNN, MSNBC, et cetera, are essentially taking the word of this oppressive communist government over that of their own country's president. They've even gone too far for CNBC's Jim Cramer. I think you have to take him seriously because he can walk back anything he says. Yeah. And, you know, you can have the Chinese officially deny it. The Chinese haven't necessarily been square and honest, have they? I mean, suddenly we believe the Chinese are honest. It's kind of weird lying. that so, I'm many, not going there. so many people would rather take the word of the Chinese Communist Party <laughs> than our guy. I am really aghast that we trust the PRC more than we trust the White House. I love Joe Kernan. He was making a point with a laugh there, but it's a serious one. 
Now, forget what you think of Trump's style or tweets or the way he dresses, whatever it is. Look at the results. We have yellow vest protests in France. We have the ongoing Brexit drama. We have Italy's government in complete chaos meltdown. Germany headed or already in a recession. My friends, Europe is in chaos. And yet the EU's attempt at managing democratic socialism, we see it's failed miserably. Now, remember that Obama, the darling of the media elites, the global media elites, he tried his best to push a European-style agenda here in the United States. And that worked out so well that he ended up turning over the White House to Donald Trump. People didn't want any part of it. And yet, it's insanity. The Democrats are doubling down on socialism in this new election in 2020. And they're really marketing this madness to our youth. And they will do to America what the EU has done to Europe. Zero growth, a destroyed and demoralized middle class. And yet, somehow, the media will again miss the real story. And that's the angle.